Hello Integrated Machine Learning and AI family. In this video I'm going to just show you how to install Git, how to use it from the Git Bash shell, and also how to use it from Visual Studio Code, and we will be integrating that usage with GitHub. Um, because you'll be doing your own, it's all very simple. So the first thing we want to do is just go and find the download for GitHub for Windows. And it's easy to find. Uh, it'll come up like this most of the time. But you want to download Git for Windows. Choose uh, the processor size bitwise for your machine. Most of you probably have 64-bit by now. I'm going to download that. You can see I've already downloaded it. I'm just re-downloading it for your enjoyment. Once it's downloaded, I'll start the download. Now Git is both very simple. You can learn it in just the short time I'm going to show you now for your individual work. But it's also very powerful. And anything powerful can take time to learn how to use properly. But we're going to go through the absolute basics for individual work. And some of the things you're going to see on this install screen, you can go back and learn them anytime. I've already uninstalled and installed this many times just to make sure what I'm going to show you is uh, going smoothly. So, yes, we just want it to go in program files in, uh, in a directory called Git on your C drive. And, um, yes, that already exists because I've been there before. And then I would just take these default options. You can reinstall this at any time. Uh, there's constant updates to get. So there's opportunities uh, to change these options over time. But let's just take all the defaults. There's one default we're not going to take. So yes, in your startup menu folder, menu folder right here, we do want to just use the name get. And then this is the only option I'd be careful to change unless you love Vim, and loving Vim is not a bad thing, but it's, a, it's an old world power tool. It's okay if you don't want to use it. I'm just going to say Visual Studio Code, but probably it wouldn't have mattered what we chose because of the way we're going to use it. Uh, let Git decide. We could talk ad nauseum about all these options. Really, the rest of the defaults are fine, and again, there's plenty of time to learn more details in the future, but really, I just want to get you guys started on the most basic things. I will fast forward through this install. Okay, now that that's installed, I don't want to launch the Git Bash right now. I don't want to view the release notes. I'm just going to finish. There's one other thing I want to encourage you to do. Um, if you have not already done this, please create your own GitHub account. It's easy. You really want it as you build your online portfolio. A lot of the things we're going to learn will be illustrated in here. You can see the new ruler of my household is screaming. Yes, that's my baby golden retriever complaining because it's in its crate. It sees me talking to you guys and it's jealous. Once you've created that account. Um, there's another thing we want to do, uh, or if you already have one, if you haven't yet created an SSH key, a secure shell key, we want to do that. So how do we do that? Let's type GitHub um, SSH key creation. And you can just take this first option now this can get confusing, and I just want you to know this is all we need right here. If you already have a key, I'm going to show you how to use that key. Now at this point, we've installed Git for Windows. So what we want to do is we're going to go over here and just type Git. And you can see one of my options is Git Bash. I'm going to open that, and I put that line, I copied it into my keyboard buffer. I'm just doing a shift insert, 
Now I can't use that email as is. I need to use my email. So I'm going to say tom.ives at gmail.com. That's the one I want to use. And I hit enter. And it wants to know the file in which to save the key. I strongly recommend just using the default. And it's telling us where it's going to put it. In C, users, my username, dot SSH directory. And these are the file name, base file names it'll use for the two key files. So I'm just going to hit enter to take that default. Please, for your own sanity, do not enter a passphrase. Because if you do, every time you push or pull from GitHub, you'll have to enter that passphrase. If you're locking your machine and unlocking it when you come back to it, locking it when you leave it, unlocking when you come back, you really don't need a passphrase. So I'm going to use the same non -pass, no passphrase again. And then it created the key. Now, I could copy it from right here. That is my fingerprint. Let me highlight this. I could just copy this right now. But I want to show you where to go find it, which we just talked about. I'm going to go ahead and close this Bash shell. And then I'm going to open one of my windows here. And you see this directory? And I've saved some old keys here that I could use again if I wanted. I go in here. This one that has no extension, that's your private one. Please don't undress yourself digitally in public. Don't ever share that key with anyone ever. That would not be good because this is a tunnel between you and GitHub. However, this one you can put wherever you want to create a secure shell tunnel between you and the place that you're interacting with. For us, that will be GitHub. So I will uh, open this. I'm going to open with something very simple like Notepad. And I'm going to do a Control A, which will copy all that. I'll do a, excuse me, highlight all that. I'll do a Control C, which will copy all that. Now I've got that in my keyboard buffer. I'm going to head back over to my GitHub site, which is right here. And I am going to create, uh, excuse me, I'm going to go to my settings. So right here next to my little avatar picture or my, my headshot picture, I click this down arrow here <coughs> and I'm clicking on settings. Then I scroll down over here on settings till I see SSH and GPG keys. Now you can see I already have a key here, but for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to delete that key. Yeah, I understand it's really bad. And I'm going to create a new key. It's the one I just copied. So I'm going to use my old name here, right here. And I'm going to copy that one that I had in my keyboard buffer with a control V. And there it is. And now I'm going to add that key. And now that exists. Well, what does that allow me to do? I'm going to go over to my repositories and I'm going to create a new repository for my GitHub account. And we're just going to call this practice. And uh, I'm going to make it public and I'm going to add a readme file. And I'm not going to add this other stuff yet. We can do that later. And I'm going to create repository. OK. Uh, I didn't give much descriptive text to that. But I could actually edit this right now and commit it and do all that. But we're going to do that from our account. So if I want to get the code, I can make sure the SSH is underlined. And then I can put that on the clipboard. This is the path to the SSH version of this repository called Practice. OK. Now I'm going to go over to one of my uh, locations that I like to put stuff. And I'm just saying, you know what? I kind of want a new set of, of GitHub repos. So I'm going to do New Folder. And I'm just going to say GitHub practice. Oh. 
and then I'm going to go in here and I right clicked and uh, yeah good enough of this is showing when I write let me do it a little lower if I right click in here you can see that git bash here that means it will open the git bash shell program in but at this directory so you can see it is github practice now I'm going to type this is key right here let's remember this git not got git clone now I'm going to do shift insert and that is what I copied into the keyboard buffer from github uh, let's see if I can show those at the same time I think I can oh almost here we go well boy that was a lot of effort there it is oh fun so there's what I wanted and I'm gonna go in ahead and clone that to my local machine now you can see what it's saying is it's recognizing um, you, you've not used this before are you are you really okay with it and I can say yes no or use my fingerprint I'm gonna say yes not yas yes and then it's added it to the list of known host I'll show you what that means um, so now that we've done that let's go look sure enough there's that directory and there's the readme file that's really simple at this time so that's good news but what, what did it mean by the list of known hosts well we were using that specific key and look here's those known hosts if we open that up right now the known hosts so we're going to let be happy with that and that's my SSH what if you pass this public key to say GitLab, which is another hosting site like GitHub, or you uh, put it somewhere else? You can use this public key to many locations uh, for a secure shell type uh, application. So now that we've done that, let's go into uh, VS Code. And um, I'm going to open that in a special way here. I want to come up to here and just open. Uh, I wish I wanted to show you when I it's going outside the view, but when I right click on this, there's an option to open with code, and it's got the VS Code icon. And sorry for the background noise in my house. I've just given up on waiting for it to be quiet enough. I found the background noise is actually kind of entertaining to others. So sorry for that. Uh, VS Code opened. And I'm just going to shrink it down and put it inside our view. And sure enough, uh, here's that readme file. And it's only got this so far. So we're going to add something. This is simply a practice readme file and uh, we're going to save that and I want to do one other thing you see right here new file I'm going to say uh, complicated code.py and I'm just going to make it really complicated here by spelling it correctly maybe and printing hi uh, and I'll save that. Okay. Um, now, you can see it knows Git is installed. So what I'm going to do, it, it sees that I've got two changes. I've made a change to the readme. I've added a file. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back over to my file explorer and I'm going to go in here and I want to open this is a git repository now because when you see that dot git if you deleted that that would destroy this as a repository you would lose all the information from this uh, you could probably recapture it if you hadn't done too much 
but you would lose this latest history that we're creating. So I'm going to right click. Here I'll do it even low, lower so you can see it all. And I'm going to do a Git bash here to open it up. And this is where you want to take notes. These are the only commands you need. And in another video, I'll show you how to make this fancy stuff to give you little indicators of the state of your GitHub repo on your local machine. So I'm going to do git add dot. Now what does that mean? It means all the changes you've made, stage them. Put them on the stage. And I hit enter. Now I want to commit. Now what do I want to commit? Everything I just added. Now this is a little redundant seeming now, but as you learn more about Git, you'll appreciate why it has these extra steps because there are other things you can do. So I'll just say changed, read me, just very small descriptions, added, pi file. And I'm going to hit enter. And now it's committed those changes. And now I want to do good, get, push, origin. We're pushing it to the origin. What are we pushing there? Main. And it pushed all of that up to GitHub. Well, let's let's see if we can verify that. So we go over here to our repo. I go to the main level, and I need to do a refresh. And voila, there's my complicated code, and I can view it here. I could actually edit it here if I wanted, if there was some need to do that. Okay, let's go back over to Visual Studio Code. And remember, um, we did all that from just the git bash shell. Let me show that again. So we did a git add dot, a git commit dash a dash m uh, with the note, and then a git push origin main. Now let's do something else. Uh, let's go back over here. Let's add yet another file. So that's a super complicated code. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to ignore you. Now I'm going to just say for i in range 10 print i. Um, I guess I'll run this for the grins. And yes, it ran okay, so I'll close this console. And um, I've got that saved. This is saved. This is saved. Oh, look, it recognizes the one change. What's the one change? We added the super complicated code. Well, okay, I see the changes here. What can I do? I can. Um, Right here, I can stage the changes with this plus sign, so I'm going to do that. And how does it know what to do? Because of that dot .git directory. It got the information from there. Now I've staged it, now I can commit it. Oh, what's my message? Uh, oh, we don't need to put quotes. Added, second, I'll say it this way pi file. I hit enter and now that's done a commit with the message. Now this is a little trickier. I'm doing control shift P to get to the command palette and you can see it already knows I've done a git push recently so I'm going to choose that but um, all you'd have to do is a, a git push and see it's bringing it up even if you haven't used it recently. And it knows that it's origin, and it knows the, the main name. Yeah. So we're going to just let it do that. Well, I just did that from VS Code instead of this bash shell. Is that OK? Let's see. Oops, sorry. Um, let's, we're here in practice. And look, it added super complicated code for us. Isn't that cool? So let's think about the implications of this. Is it easy to use the bash shell to, to commit our code and keep it up to date on GitHub? Yes. Is it easy to do it from in, within VS Code? Yes. And um, 
By the way, I didn't have any special packages installed to do that. You can install some packages that will help you, but again, you can do it here with these lines and you can make notes of these, or you can do it from within here the way I showed. Again, the plus, the commit, and then the command palette, which is control shift P. Now, this video has gotten a little long, but I want you to appreciate what you know how to do now. You know how to install Git for Windows. You know how to create a GitHub account, which I didn't show you, but there's plenty of help on doing that. You saw how to create an SSH key and then um, how to add that SSH key to GitHub. Then you saw that once that was established, you could start a new repo in GitHub and clone it. You could actually clone it from VS Code too, and uh, either I or Guy will do an illustrative video of that. Once uh, you've cloned it, you can commit your changes and update your GitHub repo. Again, you want to get good with GitHub, or get GitLab is good too. It's another site like GitHub. You want to get good at using from your primary IDE, for example, Visual Studio Code or one of your choice. You want to get good at either using the Bash shell or your primary IDE in uh, staging, and that's with ads, and committing your code and then pushing it up to your remote repository. Why? Because over time, you want to have the skill to build up your repository and on GitHub or, or your main Git site. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Uh, please do give me honest feedback, and I'll talk to you later.